to grow together as a nation and achieve excellence in life, in every aspect of life, must be our lookout. So we must be ready to take up challenges, face competitions, emerge as excellent and successful all the time. There must be active competitions, healthy competitions introduced into any sphere of life, be it private sector, be it the public sector. Sector is like power, electricity. Sectors like power, electricity, information technology, etc. must be controlled by the public sector and there must be equally strong competitions provided from the private sector also. A healthy competitions so that the customers get the best. They have something to choose from. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis is a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Syrian army attacks restive homes in Hama. Growth in the US economy quickens in fourth quarter. London 2012, Isles of Wonder theme for Olympic ceremony. Costa Concordia company offers passengers compensation. Car bomb attack near funeral in Baghdad kills 32 people. France to resume Afghan troop training despite attack. And now the news in detail. Syrian army attack restive homes in Hama. The Syrian army has launched renewed assaults on several cities including homes and Hama, killing dozens of people according to activists. Most of the deaths have occurred in homes, rights groups say. The Arab League says there has been a higher escalation of violence in recent days. A news reporter in Damascus says the regime appears to be losing control over rebellious areas of the capital. The UN Secretary Council is due to discuss a possible resolution on Syria. The reporter's Jeremy Bowen in Damascus says opposition fighters have set up checkpoints and appear to move around freely in the suburbs of Doma and Sakuba. President Bashar al-Assad's forces still operate in these areas, but they do not appear to be able to maintain control, our correspondents and reporters say. Thousands of people attended a funeral of an anti-government protester killed on Thursday in Sakuba. Mourners chanted, better to die than be humiliated. <laughs> Mourners chanted, better to die than humiliated. Meanwhile, the UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says Hama came under assault in the early hours of Friday with heavy gunfire and loud explosions. Earlier, it was reported that 30 people had been killed in the assault, but rights groups now say far fewer people died. They claim that at least 50 have died across the country in the past two days. Those casualties include about 10 people killed in homes on Friday and 12 people who died in violence elsewhere in the country. Activists say Holmes was bombarded on Thursday and more than 30 people were killed in an accident described as a terrifying massacre by the observatory's Rami Abdul Rahman. General Mustafa al-Dabi, who is heading the Arab League's monitoring mission, said violence has sowed in a significant way in recent days. It's thought that the Friday Security Council meeting announced by France's UN mission on its Twitter page will discuss an Arab League plan to end the violence. 
According to Reuters news agency, the Moroccan delegation on Thursday held talks with the Russian and Chinese diplomats to discuss a resolution being drafted by Arab and European countries. Growth in the U.S. economy quickens in the fourth quarter. The pace of U.S. economic growth increased in the final three months of 2011, according to official figures. The economy grew at an annualized rate of 2.8 percent, as the Commerce Department said. This was up from the 1.8 percent annual rate recorded in the previous quarter, although it was slightly lower than the 3 percent rate predicted by analysts. However, the growth largely came from business stockpiling goods they had produced rather than selling them. Although the stockpiling lifted the figures, analysts believe business will not continue doing this, resulting in a lower growth figure for the current quarter. The pace of consumer spending picked up to 2% from 1.7% in the previous quarter. Much of this was attributed to increase in sales of new cars, which rose by 14.8% over the quarter. The Nipponese tsunami last March disrupted production and delivery of models of major manufacturers leaving customers waiting for pre-ordered cars. Repairing damage, U.S. Treasury Secretary Timothy Gaither said it was worth remembering that the economy was still recovering from the 2008 global recession. I think it's probably worth recognizing that we still face tremendous challenges, he told a session at the World Economic Forum in Davos. As a country, we are still repairing the damage caused by the devastating financial crisis that still has huge lasting impact on the basic fortunes of most Americans. He said the housing and construction sectors were still weak, unemployment remained a huge challenge and people still had too much debt. He added it was reasonable to expect the U.S. economy to grow between 2% and 3% in 2012. The rate of growth depends on two fundamental factors. He said what happens in Europe and the Gulf, which determines oil price and whether Republicans in Congress decide they want to legislate things that are good for growth in the short term. London 2012, Isles of Wonder theme for Olympic ceremony. Europe's largest bell will ring the start to Pound's 27 million Olympic opening ceremony, inspired by Shakespeare and featuring NHS nurses and 900 local pupils. The show's artistic director Danny Boyle said the Isles of Wonder ceremony was inspired by The Tempest. Six months before the performance kicks off London 2012, the Oscar winner said it would be about a land recovering from its industrial legacy. One billion people are expected to watch the opening ceremony on 27th July. Billy Elliot director Stephen Dalry, London 2012's executive director of ceremonies, said the task of putting on the greatest shows on earth, albeit with a budget of Pounds 81 million equated to the task of producing 165 Western musicals at the same time. The, the Olympic and Paralympic opening and closing ceremonies will represent one journey to the end of the Paralympics, looking at two, who we are, who we were, and who we would wish to be, he said. Being on Elfier, Boyle, who is best known for directing Oscar-winning film Slumdog Millionaire and Train Sporting, said the Isles of Wonder theme captured the essence of Britain. The bell would hang at one end of the stadium and Boyle said he wanted people to hear it for hundreds of years. We all be celebrating the whole of the country. There are so many Isles of Wonder, he said. With a pound's 27 million to spend on opening ceremony, far less than the pound 65 million given to Chinese film director Zhang Yimou for the Beijing 2008 spectacular, Boyle said he would be taking his lead from previous Olympics. You are standing on shoulders of giants, you cannot but live in the shade of your predecessors, he said. 
He described Beijing's opening ceremony as extraordinarily eye-wateringly spectacular and that Athens 2004 was incredibly beautiful. Before the 20,000 cast event kicks off on 27 July at 21 hours BST, with the tolling of the bell, an Olympic stadium packed with 80,000 spectators will be entertained by a pre-show that will start at 12 minutes past 8, 2012 BST. Some 900 youngsters from the six Olympic horse boroughs will be given roles in the opening and closing ceremonies, he added. A total of 1,650 children from 18 primary and 7 secondary schools in East London have been auditioning for the roles in recent weeks. Keeps me awake at night, thank God. I'm blessed like that. I'm very lucky like that. But I'm sure it'll, it'll get worse as we get closer to the event. Anything can go wrong. You, and you, you set yourself spectacular ideas to try and execute live. And you're, you will always worry that something technical will go wrong. The biggest worry we have, I think, is weather. And it's always... But that's, that's being British. We're going to actually, we're going to have some rain in the stadium, whether it rains or not, because we thought we can't let people leave the, the opening ceremony without having a little bit of rain, even if it's the most beautiful day on earth, which we hope it will be. Um, so weather is the biggest issue because the stage becomes slippy and that affects the performers and things like that. that but then, then there's all technical worries. But we've got a great team of people working on it and trying to anticipate as much as possible. It's a rather beautiful sequence, uh, rather lovely and charming. And it does bring together two of the things that we've announced today, which is the children who will be taking part in the opening ceremony drawn from the, the six horse boroughs. And we've been around auditioning in the schools, which has been fantastic. And um, staff from the nurses and staff from the NHS. And uh, we'll be bringing those two elements together in a, in a lovely routine. I can't tell you exactly what the routine is yet, but it's a lovely story, actually. And that's the other thing. I didn't mention this this morning, is we've tried to put some narrative in the, um, in the evening, some storytelling. And that, again, a bit like, like humour, it's quite difficult in a stadium. They tend to be narrative free zones they tend to be just spectacles you look at spectacles the commentators giving you the narrative on the telly but we wanted narratives to be within the stadium themselves little stories told because we want to do the other thing we want to do is try and generate an emotion and again you don't really get that in stadium shows because they're usually too big to get that intimacy of human beings talking to each other and through stories you generate emotion so it's a bit of wit and a bit of emotion really in those stories we're trying to make sure we don't do lowest common denominator stuff, you know, where you kind of reduce everything because you're worried about such a body won't get that or such a body won't get that. So we will be using language, even though you're encouraged not to in these shows, there's, because language is a very a huge part of our culture, obviously in terms of our writers, Shakespeare, who we've talked about earlier. and uh, so, that, so we will be using some language. So we won't be reducing everything to make it appeal to everyone. You know, this will be about us and, you know, some pe if some people don't get it, that's fine, you know, that's what we're like. Costa Concordia Company offers passengers compensation. The Italian company that owns the capsized cruise ship Costa Concordia has offered passengers 11,000 euros, that means dollars 14,000 each in compensation.